In this video, I'm going to talk about how I got into doing electronics. This may or may not interest you, I don't know, stick around and find out, I suppose. Like most people which are doing electronics, I have a bit of a passion for it, and I actually have an interest. Not everyone does, some people do it because it's their job, and they just fell into that career path, and that's just what they're doing. They do it, and they have skills in it, but they don't necessarily do it because they enjoy it. Some people, like myself, do electronics because they enjoy doing it. It's a bit of a rush, I suppose, when you fix something, and you solve a problem, or you figure something out. And it's a very enjoyable process for many people. I started tinkering around with electronics when I was about six or seven. That's because my parents would give me things to keep me occupied because I was probably under their feet or something, I don't know, but I was probably in their way and being annoying. And they gave me things to keep me busy. They gave me bits of broken electronics and they told me to pull them apart. And I'd be sitting there for hours desoldering resistors and capacitors and inductors and all sorts of stuff. And I'd just take them all apart, chuck them into little bins, you know, little ice cream containers and I'll just chuck all the parts in there you know that taught me how to desolder things without burning my fingers too much for a start I didn't actually know what these parts were that much I just pulled them out because my parents said hey pull this thing apart give me things to do and it's fine I quite enjoyed sitting there doing this you know eventually I started to wonder okay what are these parts I'm taking out what are they for you know what's this circuit I'm starting to look at here what's this bit do and that's where my curiosity sort of grew when I was in my very early teens, actually probably pre-teens, actually, I think I was probably 12, I started getting into CB radio. One of the things about CB is that you need more power, or you want to tune it up a bit, or that kind of thing. You understand how it works to get the best performance out of your CB, and learning about antenna systems, and propagation, and what have you. All the RF world, all the mumbo-jumbo magic systems. From that, I sort of started tinkering with CB radios. I started off, well, probably messing up a lot of them, really, I suppose, because, like anything, is a learning curve. And I didn't have proper tools or equipment to be working on CBs. And I did a few things. I, I designed some circuits and things like that. And I started doing alignments on radios without really having the gear. Well, I didn't have the gear. I was just basically using other radios to listen to them and trying to align them by ear. And I did that for a year or two. Then I realised that I can't really do this without the proper gear. So I did buy some bits and pieces and play around. But it's mostly just playing around CBs and modifying them, getting ex extra channels, improving modulation, probably ruining <laughs> modulation actually. What I sort of progressed into, and I learned about EPROMs and EPROM programming, where I was wanting to do modifications on some CBs. And EPROMs are just binary devices in a way. You know, you program with hex, which is just a binary code. So if you've got a CB radio with a PO on it, PO is a phase that loop, which is basically a frequency control device. Some of those are controllable by binary, you can actually change the codes. Some aren't, they've got like a ROM code on them, so you can't actually go outside of the designated code range. But others were not that way, and you could change the binary codes on a PO and get different channels. And so one of the popular things was to get channel modification, you know, and expand them. A friend of mine was a couple of years older than me, I'd met him through CB. And he was designing this EEPROM modification board and programming EEPROMs to do a frequency conversion on an old 360 FM CB radio. That's what it's based on. This is back in the UK. Bit of illegal, really. Uh, <laughs> this is a while ago, don't forget. So he was designing this board. He'd been working on trying to figure out this coding and everything for it. And I was around his place one night chatting to him. And he was talking about how he's designing this thing and what he'd done. He's showing me a little bit about what he's done. And he's saying he's going to go and program it the following day at the university. Because that's where he had access to an EEPROM program at the university. And I didn't know anything about hex coding, how to program EEPROMs, or even EEPROM architecture and all that. I knew nothing about it. What really, I think, sparked me into electronics a lot was that I went home at 10 o'clock that night with the basic fundamentals that he taught me with hex. You know, this is hex. This is the address lines and the data lines of an EEPROM. And you program with hex. And you put in hex codes at this address. And it gives you this result in binary on the output. And up until, like, 9 o'clock that night, I knew nothing about them. 10 o'clock I went home with this basic understanding that my friend had told me and I went home and I sat down for half the night on bits of paper drawing out all the binary codes of the channels I'd want to make a channel modification board for myself and what bands I'd want I figured out what the existing codes are to control the POL so I knew what codes I needed to change bands so like 45 channels down 45 channels up 90 channels up and that sort of stuff 10k shift which is like a one channel step so you can get alpha channels which were normally accessible things like that I worked out all these codes on bits of paper I would draw out the binary codes and I worked out what the hex was for that code then I worked out how I was going to program the EEPROM controller with a switch and I basically did it overnight and I caught my friend the following morning at 8 o'clock in the morning I called up to him I said look okay I'm coming with you I'm going to do one as well and he could not believe that overnight I had completely learned how to do EEPROMs and did all the programming for I think it was six bands with 10k shifts, so it's like 12 bands of channels. Didn't actually believe when I said, yes, I did this last night. I probably still don't believe it to this day, but... <laughs> 
that's what really sparked my interest, I think, is when I actually finally did something constructive and useful with the knowledge I'd gained in a short time. That went really well. Now, I've actually still got April. Hold on. Here's my tray of pre-programmed Aprons. This is like my copies. So these are like my original code ones. So if I somehow lost the software on my computer and I couldn't retrieve the programming information for the EPROMs, I've got hardware copies basically. So I could just copy these in and carry on. These are just backups. But in here, this device here, that is the EPROM. Low, low, high, high. In UK for 719. Right, so this is for the MB8719 POL. That is the programmed EPROM which I did that morning. So that was like the turning point for me when I did that EPROM and I finally did something and it worked. The amazing thing was I made my own little EPROM board to the looking version on a bit of Perth board, made all that, I stored it in a radio and it worked perfectly. I didn't have a single mistake. My friend, on the other hand, he had several mistakes in his code and he couldn't believe that I got mine right either. Because <laughs> he would work on this for weeks, months even I think. So that was like a turning point for me, I realised, hey, this electronics thing, I actually understand it. <laughs> and that was quite a major point for me where I sort of went, okay, I actually just did something with electronics. Instead of just tinkering around with it and playing around, I actually achieved something with it. So there was a shop called um, Trucking in the UK, and they were like a main outlet for CB type stuff. And you could buy modification uh, books and uh, Lou Franklin books. Lou Franklin was a big author for CB World, and he told you about electronic circuitry and CBs and how they worked and how to fix them and how to modify them, that sort of stuff. Very interesting books, very thorough. And that taught me a lot about CBs and getting into that stuff. And I'm talking about CBs a lot because that's where my basis is from. And when the internet became a bit more widespread later on, I wasn't you know, doing a lot of electronics. I was off and on, I'd do some and I'd be like a year or two, wouldn't do anything at all. And then when I came to New Zealand, I had the internet. The internet came around and it's like this very early days of the internet. I thought, right, you know, I've got this CV information, I've got these things I've been doing and these projects I've been working on. It's, it's try and find some way of doing something with this. And so I built my Radio Mods website which is about CB radio and ham radio stuff. Now, a lot of that information is stuff I basically collated from different sources. A lot of it is from that. I didn't come up with all of it. This stuff in here, which is mine, some things which I've shared, which wasn't available anywhere else. I've done that. But I basically collated a lot of information and put it together on one site. That was a good thing, because a lot of those sites which I've got that information from have long gone. And there's also a site which was competing against my site in a way, I suppose. They came around not long after mine, probably about two or three years after I started my site, this other site started. And that appears to have dropped off the face of the earth. That's dis disappeared and gone. And so I'm now back to being like the main source, I suppose. But yeah, so that's when I got into the internet side of things and sharing information on the internet. Again, around CB radio stuff. But because CB is not very big in this country, I didn't really do much of it. And so it's off and on. I went off and did some other stuff. And I didn't really do much of electronic stuff for ages. And then I discovered Dave Jones on his EV blog channel. And that sort of sparked an interest in well. I mean, obviously I've been tinkering with the electronics, not the CB stuff, but anything else I've been playing around with and fixing things and what have you um, in, back to, in between that time. But when I discovered Dave, I thought, ah, oh, this is brilliant. You know, this is really good information, electronics focus. It really caught my attention. And I, I basically binge watched Dave's videos for like two weeks. He drove my wife nuts. <laughs> that was quite a turning point for me because I thought, right, I could do this. I could make videos and try and just record videos about things that I'm doing. You know, things I'm working on, again, a bit like I did my radio mod site, document things that are happening, but I could do it in a video format and show things I've worked on. Well, there's two benefits to doing that, and that is that one is that first I'm documenting what I'm doing, and if I ever forget what I did to something, I can go back and watch the video, which means I can refresh my memory, because my memory is not always perfect. It used to be way better than it is now. And the second thing is it shares what I'm doing and gives other people the opportunity to learn from it. Like, what I noticed with doing the CB stuff is that when I'd get repairs, I'd see the same kind of fault over and over and over again. And it made doing repairs easy because I knew what to look for and I could find that quickly and resolve it quickly. And I was thinking, well, a lot of these things other people could fix as well if they knew how to do it, if they knew what the problem was. Which is another reason I did the YouTube channel. Because I thought, if I share it on the internet, other people which have the same kinds of equipment or the same kinds of issues will be able to fix them. And it will save so much waste. That's my biggest pet peeve, especially these days in modern times. Things being wasted and thrown away. And it just drives me nuts. The drive for the YouTube channel was also electronics based. I did a, tried a few different things on the channel and, and did some different aspects and different formats and different kind of topics. But I've now sort of centered around electronics, as you guys all know. That's where I'm 
really enjoying it because that's what I enjoy doing. I've got a passion for electronics, so I like to learn more and I like to face these challenges and overcome them. And this way, you see me, I might do a 17 part video series trying to fix something. And people are probably wondering, when am I going to give up? When am I going to stop and give up? And the answer to that is, when I definitely know I can't fix it. <laughs> I'll keep on going until I get there. Even if it takes me a year, I'll keep going because I want to solve that puzzle. Electronics for me is a puzzle. You have something turn up, like you know, a piece of gear like this thing over here. You go, right, what's wrong with it? First you've got to figure out what doesn't work. Then you've got to figure out why it doesn't work. Then you've got to figure out how to fix it, especially when you get situations where you've got parts which you can't get anymore. You have to substitute. And sometimes you have to make your own circuits to replace those parts. That's also interesting. So yes, that's kind of what I got into is when I started doing a YouTube channel, then my electronics side just expanded and bloomed out from that. I really enjoyed it. I built up this experience that I've now got by just buying things which are broken and fixing them. And a lot of times the motivation was that I wanted to have that piece of equipment, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. And so I would buy a broken one, fix it, and then I've got one to help me fix something else. You know, that's by my philosophy the whole time. If I can buy something which is broken, which I believe I can fix, then I will fix it. And then I've got another tool to use to help me fix other things. And so I've got all this gear now. I've got loads of stuff, loads of tools, and most of it I barely scratched the surface on even how to use it. But I've got a great collection now, and to the point now where I'm actually running out of things to buy. Things are getting either really expensive buy because they're more specialised equipment, or I don't really need it. <laughs> anyway, that's a big waffle about how I got into electronics and, and what's driven me to the point I'm at now. And this channel was about me trying to explore electronics further and share my experiences and try and improve my test equipment collection as well at the same time. Now I'm at the point where my channel's the size it is, I'm getting serious consideration from sponsors, which is great. Which means I can get better equipment for free sometimes, such as Fluke, their sponsorship's been great. Siglent has helped me by allowing me to do reviews on some of their products, even though I haven't been able to keep those products. The reviews have been some of the first ones out there. And that's helped me to grow the channel. So that's the benefit I've had from those particular ones, for example. It's great to have sponsorships from manufacturers and say, hey, yeah, we'll send you one of these things for free if you do a review on it. Great. It takes me some time. I mean, sometimes the cost, if you looked at labour hours, but it costs more than the review item is worth in some cases, sometimes not. But it benefits the channel and it benefits people who watch the channel. I think I've waffled on long enough now. That is a pretty long video. <laughs> share your experience. Share your thoughts down below in the comments. If you want to support a ageing electronics nerd click the thanks button down below to give me a donation or even better join up a patreon at the end there because patrons give me a monthly donation and you get perks as well see you next video tomorrow bye